writing about a place that is rich in oral history and it just gets passed down by word of mouth generation to generation sometimes in songs sometimes in poems or recitations and written on water was my attempt at actually recording some of the more interesting aspects of this oral history one of the aspects of written on water is mystery not just unique characters but mystery there was some research that showed back in the 80s that this area of maine was second only to area 51 in nevada for ufo sightings well a lot of these stories have to do with those sightings things people have seen that have been unexplainable and these stories are tossed around and talked about and repeated but are never written down and and i i wanted to try to write some of them down and so that aspect of this area is very interesting to me just because it's so mysterious written on water tells the story uh, of silas who was much smarter than the game wardens who, who were chasing him because they thought no one is that good so he must be breaking the law also it tells the story of finn a veteran of kason uh, whose lifelong ambition was to ride a moose and it tells of his many attempts at doing this. Also, a story about a father that brought his son up to Grand Lake Stream, Maine to experience what he had experienced as a young boy when his father brought him up. And the boy never looked up from his phone all day, but there was a turnaround at the end. And also, uh, a Native American guide who was insulted by a Texas oil man, a billionaire. And the Texas oil man paid a steep price for insulting the Native American guide. I write about Drummond Humchuk, who is 90 and lives two and a half hours from the nearest paved road, if you can imagine. The ingenious ways that he's come up with to be able to live out there on his own at his age never cease to amaze me. So I love writing about Drummond. In, in my lifetime, I've never been exposed to so many uh, colorful characters. And that's who I write about in this book. Uh, that's what I write about because I, I'm afraid that sometimes that we're losing our more colorful characters that um, conformity or homogeneity what have you uh, is taking over and there are still places where these beautiful colorful people uh, abound and Grand Lake Stream Maine is one of them if you remember there was an old TV series called Northern Exposure and a fictitious town called Sicily in Alaska well a lot of people might think that from my descriptions that this is a fictitious place it's so unlikely but it's still surviving and thriving in 2021 but alas it is real and I, i'm trying to capture some of that magic and some of that specialness in this very real place a town without esoteric characters would be a dull place indeed. So I wanted to kind of put the lens onto these wonderful, colorful characters and let the world know that such places do exist and such people as these do still exist, as unlikely as it may seem. Well, for over a hundred years, Grand Lake Stream, Maine has been a sporting destination. And yet, it's probably safe to say that the majority of people in Maine have not heard of it. And yet, if you travel to Patagonia or Russia or Alaska, 
and talk to sportsmen, fishermen, they've heard of it. And so it's, it's in this realm, it's in this circle of really cherished sporting de destinations. And I've been a fishing guide there for 23 years. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix of really wonderful, interesting people that come to this tiny hamlet in Northeastern Maine and interact with the locals there. And this sets up a, a really interesting interplay of different types of people. 